Hey guys, how's it going? It's Rob Avis here. I'm here with Glenn Smith and today I'm going to be talking about some of their latest tech here. So, so Glenn co-owns EcoGrowth and I've known about these guys for about a year and a half and I've been wanting to make this film for a long time and I finally found time to do it. So if you know a little bit about what we do with permaculture or if you've read uh, William McDonough's book Upcycle, these guys are the real deal. They are finding opportunities within waste. They're turning waste into resource in super novel ways that can be plugged into conventional businesses to both create value from the carbon that they're saving, but also um, saving in, in money and also in tippage fees. So I'm gonna pass it over to Glenn here. He's gonna introduce his company and uh, you guys are gonna be absolutely blown away. I'll make sure that I leave a link to their business in the show notes below if you wanna get in touch with them. Uh, hello, my name is Glenn Smith. Um, I have a company called EcoGrowth Environmental. Um, we started out as an industrial laundry and uh, we just figured out some different solutions uh, to address our waste streams. Uh, use those waste streams as a biomass feedstock to uh, heat our laundry water. Uh, we've been uh, looking for solutions and solving our own in-house problems uh, for over 10 years now. And we started out actually with a, uh, a wood boiler and uh, we began understanding what we could feed it. And then preparing all these different items that we came across like our waste cardboard and our waste uh, cotton rags and um, uh, cardboard waste, everything like that and uh, we began prepping them into a feedstock too so we could feed a biomass boiler. And uh, by doing so, we cut down on our uh, tippage, our fees, everything like that, and we got the benefit of the BTUs uh, from uh, uh, the biomass itself. And uh, in, our, in our industrial laundry here in Calgary, we save about $65,000 a year on our natural gas costs by using our own waste biomass and our clients waste biomass so we sell consumable products like paper towel uh, paper plates paper cups everything like that and as a company uh, we feel responsible for uh, the biomass or the the waste product itself we'll pick it up at no charge while we're there doing other services for textile matting and stuff like that bring it back to our laundry here um, and use it to heat the laundry water that washes the textile for our clients. We found along the way that the efficiency that we were amassing was, was starting to pay dividends in terms of heat value, in terms of not having to haul it away or pay for the, the tippage fees to get rid of it. And uh, that made sense on its own. So about four years ago, there was another biomass feedstock that uh, came across our plate and we'd always wanted to build a high-speed composter. So we began doing the process but we found out that uh, the rules in composting, uh, you know, there's uh, there's different things. Uh, there's 30% of all compost that's on the market are contaminated, contaminated with salmonella, E. coli, everything like that. So we didn't want to be involved with the, uh, our guys handling it, bringing it back and everything like that. So we decided to turn our high-speed composters into high-speed dryers. We're industrial laundry guys, so we took the dryers, uh, we just turned up the heat a little bit. We just render everything down, the food waste, the wet feedstocks, uh, dry it, render it down to a fiber, and it just becomes another biomass uh, feedstock for the boiler. The feedstocks that we've developed and the technologies that we have developed to dry the biomass, to shred the biomass, to combust the biomass are all developed here in Canada. We use them all now and our, our first iteration was uh, we put it in a sea can, uh, we got everything running, uh, we had some challenges because of the northern climate, we learned how to, I guess, address the problem of cold and hot and minus 40 outside and what the temperature is inside and what we've done is we we compartmentalized all these different technologies into one that parks alongside of our laundry building and we just uh, hook it up to electricity put a cold water line into our container first goes into our building heat exchanges with our, our, our big hot water tanks 
and uh, we just utilize all that energy um, that otherwise would have went to our dumpster. We built these purpose-built containers to, uh, is, we're not the only ones with a lot of waste, uh, uh, cardboard waste, wood waste, everything like that. So we give the other people the option to take this container, park it alongside their building and address their processes and get them more efficient in dealing with their waste. Um, this is the, the third container we've built. We have two other ones that are in operation in the market. Um, we have another one that is south of Tofino in uh, a community called Euclulet. Um, it is parked at a grocery store. Um, it's in the place of their actual uh, cardboard compactor. So the grocery store's hole in the wall that all their cardboard used to go through now comes through that whole same hole in the wall, goes into our purpose paint container. Uh, the cardboard gets shredded. The shredded cardboard goes into the hopper. It's augered into the boiler. And uh, the boiler itself has a, a jacket of glycol around it. And we just heat, continuously heat that glycol jacket uh, with a gasification process. The temperature of the water is heated to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, we just heat exchange with their process. They have a few challenges at that grocery store. They're right on the west coast of Vancouver Island and they have to truck anything two to three hours one way in, one way out to uh, do that. And they were looking for a way to one to get efficient, uh, go a little greener and uh, they decided to not haul their cardboard waste, use that biomass feedstock as the heating source other than the propane that they were, they're currently using. So their propane system doesn't even turn on now and uh, they're just utilizing all the BTUs available from their grocery store feedstock uh, to heat their processes for their meat department and uh, their hot water for the whole store. With the biomass feedstock um, and people using it in place of a fossil fuel like a natural gas or a propane, when you burn these type of fossil fuels, there's a carbon profile. And the carbon profile that's generated from burning a fossil fuel as opposed to burning it from biomass feedstock. Um, there's a reason why biomass is considered carbon neutral. And the best way I understand it or convey the message to that is when a tree or plant grows up, it takes in carbon over its life. And at the end of its life, when it decomposes, it only gives back the carbon that it took in over its lifetime. And you take that carbon generation or carbon in and then it gives the carbon out so it's equal you know, back and forth and uh, so it's considered carbon neutral as a fuel source because it happens on the surface of the planet it's a part of the carbon cycle that's on the surface of the planet when you're when you're pulling a, a fossil fuel out of the ground I don't want to get into all that but uh, there's a carbon profile and that adds more carbon to the atmosphere it's all about efficiency it's all about cost savings. It's all about um, trying to do the right thing uh, with the best tools that we have. And uh, we've just got to a place now using our container to address all our clients' waste needs, uh, most of them. The same technology that we utilize with uh, the biomass feedstocks, um, we have a shredder that shreds biomass. We can also use the shredder to shred plastics. Um, just the size reduction benefit in biomass. Uh, when you just shred cardboard, that's an 80% reduction in volume. Um, if you have to haul it somewhere, then haul it somewhere. But if you want to use it on site, you can use it on site. When you shred plastics, the same. Uh, plastics bulky, it takes up a lot of space, you got to compress it. When you shred it, you can make pellets, everything like that. Well, the same technology shreds plastic, so it addresses your plastic waste, waste situation. And you can use that feedstock. Uh, we have another technology where we take the shredded plastics, turn it into basically a bead, a plastic feedstock. We dehydrate the plastics. And uh, one, I didn't know there was moisture in plastics <laughs> before. And uh, there is, uh, there's uh, one to 20% in, in a lot of different plastics. And what we wanna do with plastics is regenerate it. Uh, so we'll take all the different plastics, one through seven, shred it, turn it into a feedstock, dehydrate it, take the moisture out, because what we do with it is we take 
that feedstock and put it into a 3D print press. And uh, what we do is we heat the plastics up and then it goes into a, a print gantry and a, and a feed nozzle. And you can imagine if there was a little bit of moisture in there, um, it would be spitting up and everything like that. So we take that and we use it as a feedstock and then we can print seamlessly with uh, uh, using the waste plastic feedstock and print something 3D, 3D printed useful. Uh, so a park bench or uh, a lawn chair or uh, a grocery basket or uh, you know, whatever. It's, it's, it's your imagination that has uh, a limit there. So as we, we implemented, we started drying food waste. We literally went uh, just down the block and we got 200 pounds of uh, war wonton uh, from King's Restaurant, their waste for the day. And uh, it was everything when we started dehydrating uh, the organics. And we put everything into our stainless steel box and uh, we went home, it was 4.30 at night and we didn't even know the, what, what this thing would do. We were scared it was gonna burn the building down. But uh, we just let this thing run and render all the food waste down from 200 pounds to about 40 pounds of dry biomass. And uh, it was funny because Kim and I looked at each other and said, well, that's calculated the reduction on, there was an 80% reduction in uh, weight and volume by just removing the water and rendering everything down to a dry fiber. So, when we got efficient with that, uh, one, it didn't decompose anymore, um, it didn't smell, it was safe to handle because it was sterilized using the heat uh, through our biomass dehydrator, and uh, now it has options. It uh, has options as a, uh, a feedstock for, or a fertilizer. Uh, we can put it in a smaller percentage back into soil and, and benefit the soil. Um, it can also be used as a heat source, so we use it as a BTU, um, but there's options at that point. Um, you just got efficient in your waste streams and you can store it on site to pick it up at a more opportune time. Uh, most people are picking up large wet bins and hauling it every second day, every day in most cases. Some of our large accounts, uh, one of the hotels in town had about 500 pounds a day of wet biomass we do a pickup once a month. We pick up a ton of dry material uh, which translated into about, uh, about 10, 12,000 pounds of wet material when it started and uh, we just got way more efficient on the hauling which in turn pays for the, uh, the, the equipment that's on site. Okay, I want you guys to come in with me and have a look at this latest version of our technology. Um, it's not perfect yet, but we're getting there. We're getting there. This is our Eco Growth Organic Reactor. Uh, we call them Igor for short. Um, it's a food dryer. Uh, what we'll do is we'll render down all the food waste that goes in. Um, in a 24-hour process, um, we hit start cycle, and uh, what you need to do is just put the food waste in. This will take a thousand pounds per day, and convert it into about 200 pounds of dry, called fluff. And uh, you put your food waste in. It's the same as a dryer. We vent it out just like a dryer. Uh, the hot, moist air goes out, and uh, the dry material stays in. Okay, after we do a, a load of wet biomass, we start out at a thousand pounds of wet biomass. To put it into context, you're looking at about three mid-sized bins full uh, on those wheeled recycle bins uh, goes in. Um, what we're left with is about a half of one bin of dry fluff. And uh, what that dry material does now is we just convey it out of here. We convey it directly into the feed hopper in the background there. Um, the other waste streams that most people have are your, your dry biomasses, like your cardboards, your woods, everything like that. Um, that is as well as a compatible feedstock. Uh, we just shred this stuff directly in our shredder. So 
most clients have somebody that goes out to the curb, puts all this stuff in the cardboard container, uh, they put uh, the dry food waste uh, or the wet food waste out to the curb. This is, I think, more uh, an efficient method to deal with your own waste and not having anything being hauled away. Um, we just prep all these different biomass feedstocks to feed the boiler system. Uh, the, the bulkier stuff, like your shredded cardboard, has to be shredded down to a certain size so it fits through an auger system. So um, the conveyors, we, all, we build all this equipment here in Canada. Um, the shredder, the conveyor, the hopper. The hopper has a, a very big stir in the back and uh, in the bottom of it and uh, what it does is it just pushes the material into an auger that's right here that feeds the biomass boiler in the back. So all your different biomass feedstocks about 80 to 90 percent of what's in your dumpster currently uh, can be used in this system. Um, that'll translate into 80 or 90 percent less hauling that you'll have to do and to just get way more efficient in uh, cost um, and uh, actually develop uh, more awareness on what to do with your different feedstocks and understand it. The, the conveyor is solid stainless steel. Um, all of our equipment, every paddle, every bolt, every uh, blade, tooth, uh, wheel, everything like that is all stainless steel. Um, just because we know it's going to last forever. And even at the end of its life, if there is, uh, we can recycle that to turn it into another product. The hopper system, we build in different sizes. We can customize them to feed a week, to build a, keep a week's worth of feedstock. Uh, this holds about a ton of material at a time. Um, we constantly feed it. There's always usually a constant feedstock source if it's plugged into a grocery store somewhere. Um, they always have cardboard coming back and uh, instead of the cardboard going into their cardboard container and being hauled away, they can utilize it themselves. Okay, the boiler system itself, um, there's an auger that comes from the feed bin that goes right into the combustion chamber. And uh, what we do is we, we gasify the materials. We're hotter than burning or incineration. Uh, we're above temperatures of 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. We operate at about 16 to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, so we're consuming the smoke. Uh, that's why you don't really see any smoke leaving our chimney. It's all combusted at a higher temp. Uh, we basically smolder all the materials and ignite the gases and uh, basically just turn all the biomass feedstocks into its gas form and combust them. The boiler itself is surrounded by about 65 gallons of uh, whatever liquid we want to put in it. We can put water in the summertime, we can put glycol in in the winter, uh, we can put hot oil in it. Um, so that chamber that burns at 1800 degrees, which we'll show you, um, is surrounded by that whole 65 gallon jacket. We set the temperature we want on the water. Once it hits 180 degrees Fahrenheit, that water will get circulated out by its own pump, go through a heat exchanger and uh, go into your system or your building heat or your laundry water or you know whatever use you want for it. And in the future, we'll be able to uh, create electricity with this. We park this alongside our client's location. Uh, they plug into this with their cold water. Um, the cold water goes through our boiler first. They utilize all their biomass BTU energy, heat their current systems up to 180 degrees. Our boiler circulates it back out hot and it goes back into the building's processes. Um, so you're not interrupting, you're not, you're not screwing with any of the building's processes, boilers, anything like that. You're just preheating the water that goes into their systems by using you, all your own available BTU biomass energy that you're currently paying to get rid of. Um, it's just efficiency. So your cold water coming in, it comes into this pipe here, and it goes into the tank of the boiler and it circulates in the tank. 
that energy from that 1800 degree chamber is always constantly heating that water. It's 180 degrees and then it's circulated back out on the bottom to the building. Um, so just to give you an idea, in our laundry here, we, we have two big stainless steel tanks. We've got a 3,000 gallon tank, we've got an 8,000 gallon tank. We heat that from 34 degree ground temp water up to 180 degree daily by utilizing this. So we have 11,000 gallons uh, a day that's being heated by our waste biomass um, just with this unit. So it creates a lot of BTU energies and uh, um, instead of paying to get rid of it, we use it ourselves. So this is the combustion chamber. This is the exhaust tubes where we scrub all the heat going through the vents. We have turbulators, everything like that in there. Um, this is about a one hour a week maintenance job where you actually have to Chimney sweep, you got to sweep the chimneys, you got to keep the tubes clean, you got to clean the turbulators, right? You got to clean this stuff off. Got a nice little brush that goes in and out of there. It starts out in uh, the hopper here. Um, it's augered in. We manipulate uh, air and uh, we create the perfect condition for gasification. And uh, we transfer, we basically smolder all the product and ignite the gases in the same chamber. That energy, that 1800 degree burn heat is transferred into the jacket that surrounds the heating tubes. All the, the hot flu air and everything like that, it goes through all the heating tubes. We scrub every amount of heat, bit of heat we can get out of it. By the time it goes from 1800 degrees at the combustion side, by the time it goes through all the heating tubes, it's about 110 degree heat leaving our chimney. Um, and it's a very clean waste stream. You can't see any smoke. It's, uh, it's basically been taken care of. We combust it all. Contrary to popular belief, this isn't a complete walk away unit. You have to, there is some to do <laughs> with this process. Um, it's just like a fireplace. Um, we have ash at the end of it, but if we start out with a thousand pounds at one end, we have one pound at the other end. So that's the efficiency of this. So a thousand pounds of wet food waste, and then we're ending up with less than a pound of ash. So whatever carbon footprint is involved with, with trucking and uh, getting rid of all this stuff, we can now get more efficient with it. And even the ash at the end of it, uh, you literally just mix this stuff with the water and it makes a concrete. Uh, it's good for gardens. There's lots of different uses for ash. It makes soap with it, uh, everything like that. To take care of the ash, um, what we're doing is uh, we have an auto ash removal. So at the bottom of the, the chamber here, all the ash gets augered out into a container and then we just take the ash to wherever we need. 